Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain how to diagnose uh, ESCL or electric steering column lock. Uh, and this is the part two for this part diagnostics. Uh, I have already published another video on the channel for diagnosing this component on the car. Uh, so you can check the description uh, for finding the part one of this one where I explained everything on the car and how to diagnose it with the scan tool as well. But right now I have the uh, steering column lock right now. I'm gonna explain something more about the wiring uh, because there are uh, a few uh, differences on different generations. And uh, I will dispense till the whole ESCL to tell you what could be the possible causes and how you can uh, diagnose this component in case it's faulty and uh, you can't find uh, another part to uh, replace it with the brand new one. <clears throat> so first of all, as an introduction, for those who haven't watched uh, part one, uh, normally ESCL is electronic steering column lock, which is used on push button starting system. So if you have a normal immobilizer with a mechanical key, uh, you will have a mechanical steering lock and as soon as you remove the ignition key from the ignition key cylinder uh, it will lock your steering wheel but when you simply have only a push button start uh, you, you won't have that mechanical uh, mechanism for locking the steering wheel so you will have this electronic mechanism so uh, on many cars uh, procedure is almost the same. So what I have here, this ESC belongs to a Kia, uh, which is exactly the same on Hyundai models as well. Uh, I've seen many similarities on different models. Uh, basically, Kia and Hyundai, they use two different types of ESCL. Uh, so from now on, I refer these components as ESCL, which is much easier to address because uh, ESCL stands for electric steering column lock instead of just saying the full name i refer to escl and that's exactly what you see on um, uh, scan tool and sometimes on the manuals so uh basically as i said kia and hyundai they use two different types of escl this is one of them uh, and there is another one that you see just right here this is another one the general operation for both of these two types are the same but internal structure is different so that's why I, I make this video for this one to explain how this one works and hopefully if I have another ESCL another type I will make one video for that one too to explain all the internal structure for that one too so as you see uh, ESCL uh, this one sits on uh, steering column this lock is going to jump out to lock the steering uh, column and obviously steering wheel you have one connector here which does have six pins uh, so i'm gonna explain uh, something about these pins and the connector on the escl and then uh, i will move on to dismantling the whole compound so this is the wind diagram and as you see uh, i have escl right here electronic steering column lock uh, so basically because i'm explaining right now this type of escl on kia and hyundai models uh, I'm using the uh, wire diagram uh, for those cars too. Generally, Hyundai and Kia, they call this type of push button starter smart key system. So what you see as a smart key, it actually refers to the push button start system or what they call it uh, smart key system. So this is your uh, electronic steering column lock. This is the main smart key control module. And on the first generation of a smart key system on Kia and Hyundai, we used to have a PDM, another control module, which used to work with a smart key control module to uh, manage the smart key system operation. And PDM stands for power distribution module. And as you see on the first generation, when we had PDM, uh, the connection of uh, ESCL was just like this out of six pins on uh, ESCL connector, one connector, which is normally pin number one, is unused. And the other pins, number two, three, and five, they are connected to PDM, all right? Which I will explain what they are. 
and number four and six they are connected to a smart key control module all right so basically uh, we have a ground and uh, battery voltage supply which are provided from pdm in this case so pdm is the one providing the ground and battery supply but a smart key is the one sending the enable request it means e a smart key is the control you need to request the ESCL to lock or unlock. And there are two uh, other wires, unlock switch, which, which is actually going to send the unlock uh, uh, situation to PDM. So this one is actually reporting to PDM if uh, ESCL is properly unlocked. And data line is sending actually very same signal back to a smart key this time to uh, inform the smart key about the uh, uh, situation of ESCL. So it means both of these two control units should know if ESCL is unlocked properly and successfully, then smart key and PDM will work together to turn the ignition switch on or to start the engine. And that's because, because of the safety of the driver and passengers, because it's really important to make sure that uh, ESCL is successfully unlocked before starting the engine or uh, even uh, turning the ignition switch on. That's why if ESCL is faulty on those cars, you can't uh, turn the ignition switch on and you will have a uh, check steering wheel lock system a fault, which you can see on the screen right now. So this is a very common fault on Hyundai and Kia models with push button start system. Uh, if something goes wrong with uh, ESCL, you will have this fault uh, on instrument cluster and you won't be able to start the engine or even turn the ignition switch on. So in what condition you have this uh, warning message? Any condition that affect the ESCL operation. For example, in this connector that I showed you earlier, if this connector is loose or uh, pins are dirty, anything happens to this uh, connector or pins on the connector, you will have uh, this warning message. Any of these pins, doesn't really matter which one. It doesn't have ground, it's not gonna work. Doesn't have battery supply, it's not gonna work. If uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't, if this enable wire is not working properly because it's shorted or it's open, uh, obviously, the enable signal from a smart key won't reach to ESCL. So again, nothing is going to happen. And these two for uh, these two feedbacks for uh, making sure the ESCL is unlocked successfully. If any of them is faulty, again, you will have warning message, and uh, you won't be able to uh, turn the ignition switch on. So generally, what I explained on part one of this video was uh, to check the connector right here. But if you have the PDM, if you have the PDM, you're going to need to check the battery supply on the PDM because PDM is the one providing the power to ESCL. If PDM doesn't have any power supply, ESCL doesn't have any power supply and you will have same uh, warning message. So this is, for example, right here, this is your, this is our PDM. And if you check, there is a power supply coming from here for uh, PDM from interior fuse box. So if uh, in case of any fa any fault on this fuse, no power supply on the PDM, no power supply on the ESCL and same uh, warning message. And uh, after checking the fuse, the connector on ESCL must be inspected to make sure it's not loose, it's properly seated or you can remove it to check there is no dirt or contamination inside the connector if there is you can just give it a good clean and put it back on all these wires can be checked one by one uh, which i explained on uh, part one there are another generation of uh, hyundai and kia uh, smart key system which in this case you you don't have any pdm anymore at least you don't have any exterior pdm so in the other generation the newer generation pdm is actually integrated with a smart key system. So what you see as a smart key system, it does have the PDM installed inside. So that's why in this generation, if you have a look at the ESCL, you see all pins, all those five pins are connected directly to a smart key. And still, number one is unused. 
And as you see, battery uh, positive, ground, communication, enable, and unlock. So this one used to go to PDM, which is already connected to a smart key and uh, these two. So basically in this case, again, you're gonna need to check the connector. Uh, all these wires can be inspected, but what about that fuse? I explained on part one and I showed you how a smart key fuse can uh, affect the ESL operation. Because a smart key control module is connected to multiple fuses to get the power supply, normally interior fuse box. And as I said earlier, in this case, PDM is not eliminated, it's just integrated with the smart key. It's actually part of the smart key inside. So it means one of those fuses which belong uh, to smart key control module, one of them belongs to PDM, which is already inside the smart key. So you need to check the wind diagram and find uh, uh, those fuses belong to smart key control module and check them one by one, which is normally two, three uh, fuses. I explained and showed you everything on part one. So make sure to uh, watch the part one as well to, to see how you can fix a serious fault by replacing just a fuse. Uh, because many times I've seen some guys, instead of uh, checking some, you know, accessible components, uh, they go for the hardest part and check they change the ESCL while it's not uh, fault. Let's uh, start uh, dismantling the ESCL itself. I do have one screw down there. I remove the screw. So you shouldn't uh, dismantle the ESCL if uh, you don't have electrical knowledge because ESCL is actually a safety component for the car. So if you uh, dismantle the ESCL and just play with all the uh, you know parts and components inside and make it more faulty, it can affect the uh, safety of passengers. So don't touch it unless you, you know what you are doing. So okay, so just I push it out. And the whole part, this is just a case. All right, I put the case away and everything is just right here. So this is my connector, which brings all those wires right here on the board. This is the lock itself, which is spring loaded. And I do have, uh, I do have a DC motor down there to operate. Just do it carefully, all good. So this is the board and this is the DC motor and gears and obviously this one for lock. Okay. So on the board, I have these two connections for DC motor and I have two sensors here to, to read the position of the ESCL. So basically what happens when ESCL receives the enable signal, it will activate the DC motor. DC motor rotates from here. It's going to rotate the other gear. This whole, this, this center shaft rotates as well, and it's going to push this one, this arm down. Okay. And if this one moves down, it's going to push this one down as well. If it goes up, lock will jump up with a spring because it's already spring loaded. So when this arm moves, when this arm moves, all right, when this section moves, what happens, you see this copper layer here, there's a copper layer here, which changes the position in front of those two uh, position sensors. You might see that it's behind this, uh, it's behind the board. So from here, you might be able to see that there is one sensor and the other sensor. These are actually position sensors. And this copper layer can stay in front of this one or that one based on the situation if it is locked or if it is locked or unlocked. One of them reads uh, the lock signal, the other one unlock signal. But in case of failure, if you have checked the connector, if you have checked the wiring and that fuse that I, uh, that I explained earlier, if you have checked all of them, you could go for some other steps, for example, right here on the board, like any other board, okay, it's really important to check all the connection, all these other connections, all right? So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Generally, we have six pins. As I said, one of them is unused. So you need to check all these connections because they are connected to this end, all right? 
So it means if any of these connections is broken, uh, you will have same warning message that I told you, check uh, steering wheel lock system. And the other connections as well, for example, these two, these two connections are connected to the other two and they are connected to right here to uh, the DC motor uh, terminals, all right? So these two are going to be connected to the DC motor and they go all the way from here to be connected to the board to these two and to these two. So when I check right now, these two solder connection, they, they are not in a really good situation. As you see, all others are nice and clean, but these two are not really nice and clean. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, inspect this one as well. There is a power MOSFET, you can check this one too. I have explained this one in multiple videos earlier, so you can read the code which is already on the power MOSFET and you can uh, inspect the MOSFET like any other uh, components that like any other MOSFET uh, in the market. So first of all, check all the solder connections here. Uh, check these ones too, and this one, and make sure there is no burnt, uh, you know, connection in other uh, other places. This is just very easy uh, inspection. And and there is another important thing is this magnet. All right. So basically, when this arm is moving up and down. This magnet, this magnet stays in front of those uh, uh, position sensors. All right. So basically, when copper layer is there, it's gonna keep this one in place as well. So the copper layer and this magnet, they are really important for uh, the ESCL operation. And obviously, this gear must be in a good uh, shape. You can test the DC motor. This is one of the most common ones as well. If it's faulty, instead of paying uh, too much money ESCL, you can just uh, change the DC motor itself. So I'm gonna inspect it right now. I have my nine volt battery supply, which is connected to, in, to this uh, switch, and I have these two ends. You can keep them secure. And now I'm going to turn it on. All right. So this one shows if DC motor is uh, working or not working properly. My DC motor is already uh, fine. So as you see, many components are working together to uh, to have the ESCL working as well. But uh, many times we change the whole components just because of a really, really minor problem. Some, most of the time for a solder disconnection or uh, this MOSFET uh, is gone. Uh, sometimes it could be from the copper layer or from the DC motor. So you need to check all of them one by one as we explained and you can fix it and put it back on. If you replace the whole ESCL assembly when you put it back on, you have to relearn it. Normally on Hyundai and Kia, when you replace the ESCL, uh, when you put the new ESCL back on, you have to reprogram the keys, okay? So there is no specific procedure for relearning the ESCL. You need to reprogram the keys. But if you just do a, uh, a small repair on the unit, you don't need to do anything because this one is already learned. You just put it back on and everything is uh, good to go, but you wanna make sure it's working properly because it's really important. It's related to the safety of the uh, passengers and uh, driver. Uh, thank you very much everyone for watching. I will put these diagrams into the description as well, just in case if you need it, you can download it from the description and the link for uh, part one of ESCL uh, diagnosis.